Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh And a very good morning to Prof Omaima and to my classmate Now, today, my group and I will be presenting on the bank's credit and financing information Which is OCBC Al-Amin and Standard Chartered Study So, before I begin, I would like to introduce to my group, ma uh, to my group members uh, My name myself, uh, Nurul Fateha And we also have Alma, Nur Ashima, Naba and Ningesh Background of OCBC Al-Amin. So, OCBC Al-Amin Bank Berhad was founded in 2008 as a wholly owned subsidiary of OCBC Bank Malaysia Berhad to enhance the bank operation in Islamic banking more than a decade after the bank uh, originally started offering sharing of compliant banking products and services in 1995. So, OCBC Al-Amin, they provide both Muslim and non-Muslim with a wide range of competitive and innovative financial products and services, including consumer, corporate, treasury, investment and transaction banking. So, here, our fixed financial rate and profit sharing have like attracted a rising number of loyal consumers who wants to benefit from the Islamic concept of justice and honesty. So, next, I will pass to Amma. All right, thank you so much, Fatiha. Now let's move on to the next section, which is the bank, the OCBC Al Amin Bank's vision and mission statement. So their vision is to help individuals and businesses across communities to achieve their aspiration by providing innovative financial services that meet their needs. And then move on to the to their mission is the. Focus on the long-term value creation for our shareholders, customers, people, and the communities that we serve. We adopt prudent risk-taking in all our dealings and investment. Only then can we achieve growth and sustainability for our business. So with that, I would like to pass, to, pass back to Fatiha. Alright, thank you Alma. Now we look at OCBC type of financing product and contracts. Firstly, buy vitamin IG term financing I. So here, uh, it is a competitive fixed rate pricing based on the Sharia structure of BBA, which is deferred payment sale. So according to this concept, uh, the bank buys the client asset for a price and then sell it back to the customer at a markup price which include the profit. So the customer will uh, pay the bank uh, the sale price on different basis for an agreed time. So here the purpose of financing is to refinancing of asset. Uh, is for acquisition of asset and working capital financing. Next, the type of asset are uh, the residential properties, the commercial properties, uh, offices, industrial properties and land for development and business asset which is like for commercial uh, motor vehicle, plant, equipment and machinery. And the benefit of this financing product is that uh, it is a fixed uh, financing rate. It saves more and manage your cash flow with their competitive rate and there are no extra charge for payment. It is uh, also available for working capital and convenience of making your payment and assessing your uh, OCBC Alamin Bank account at any OCBC Alamin and OCBC Bank uh, branches through the ATM and through the Giro. And the eligibility for this uh, financing product are uh, for sole proprietors, proprietors uh, partnership for small and medium businesses, corporate and, uh, and for the individual. And secondly, we go to um, Diminishing Musharaka Asset Financing I. So here, uh, it is a financing based on the Sharia structure of Musharaka Mutanakisa. And under this arrangement, uh, the bank and the client own the asset jointly under the Musharaka, Musharaka contract. And the bank then lists the asset to the customer under Ijara contract. And then, and then the client gradually acquired the bank portion of the asset and once the bank share is uh, fully acquired, the customer own the asset completely. And as you guys can see here, the type of the asset, the benefit and the eligibility are the same as BBA term financing. Thirdly, the industrial higher purchase I. So, uh, it is an asset financing facility for commercial usage and Sharia compliant reason for equipment for machinery or good vehicle with a maximum allow loaded weight exceeding uh, 2,540 kg. So here, it is based on the Sharia principle of Al-Ijarah Tumat Abai that refers to a hiring or 
lease agreement which is followed by a sale agreement. So here, uh, there are two contracts that must be completed which is Al-Ijarah uh, Hire Contract and Al-Buy Sale Contract. So the bank uh, buy the asset and hire it to the client for a specific amount of time that both parties agrees on. So, uh, and then the customer pays the bank rent during the leasing duration and then the rental uh, payment is made up to the asset, uh, asset purchase price as well as the bank profit margin. And then the bank retain ownership of the asset and it serves as the security for the facility. And at the end of the rental period, the client will acquire the asset and become the owner. Next, as the for, uh, for the financing tenure, uh, it is up to 5 years and the financing margin is up to 90%. And the features are fixed monthly installment, they are no extra charge for repayment and it's uh, convenient also uh, for making your payment and access your OCBC bank account at any OCBC branch. Uh, and then the eligibility are only for the firms and for the company. Lastly, uh, the type of financing product and contract of OCBC Al-Amin here is Al-Amin Higher Purchase I. And here, it is an asset-based financing for a good covered by the first schedule of the Higher Purchase Act 1967 for Shariah Compliant Commercial Usage. And it is based on the Ijarah Muntahya bin Al-Tamlik Shariah Principle. It is uh, a leasing contract in which the lessor uh, the Islamic financial institution transfer the ownership of the lease item to the lessee to the customer at the end of the ijarah period. Here, uh, the financing uh, the financing term is up to seven years and the financing margin is up to ninety percent. And the features and the eligibility are the same as the industrial higher purchase I. So thank you. I will pass back to Ama. All right. Thank you so much, Fatiha. And now let's move on to the next section, which is the credit risk evaluation. So what is credit evaluation? So it is essentially a process where applicants, it can either be individuals or businesses, will undergo a comprehensive evaluation by banks to determine whether they are eligible for the financing. Now, there will be a thousands of people who will be requesting on financing from a bank. So in order to narrow those numbers down and make sure that they are choosing the right people, they need to do a comprehensive background check by or to the applicant. There's a lot of aspects that you need to consider, such as credit history, employment, and so on. I will be sharing you on that um, shortly. So lending credit to someone is actually a gamble because they are highly depending on applicants' performance on paying back the credit. So this is true, actually. So banks, they will be giving out money to their customers. So they are expecting a principle, principle of amount as well as the profit to be paid in return. So, so it's actually, they are actually hoping that the customer will pay back. So it really, the bank is really hoping on how the customer utilize the money and generate uh, money from there so they can make the payment. So in order to do that, banks need to be selective and need to do a comprehensive credit evaluation to the customer. It is actually necessary to mitigate credit risk. So if they were to give the credit however that they like, they just give it uh, blindly over there. So the, the high, there's a high chance that the applicants could not pay back. Hence, the bank will lose some money. So to avoid that, they need to do, they really need to consider the correct and suitable applicants to give their money to. So how will the bankers evaluate the customer's financing and application? So we are using the Campari uh, method. So first is character. So character over here explains on the overall aspect of the customers. So some of the things that they will look for is the attitudes toward the financing, whether or not they are actually capable and responsible to pay the financing back. Then another thing, they need to make sure that they are actually fit to apply for this. So everyone can give a claim that, okay, I can pay you back. So people can give a lot of claim that they can actually pay. So what the bank could do is they could do a comprehensive background check on their past records, credit history, and then other things are such as duration of employment and others. So when they, when they see that they are, when they see the customers are actually having, 
has a good employment uh, duration. They already in the workforce for over for a certain amount of time. Then they have uh, they don't have much of a debt. Now that shows that the applicant is actually a good candidate. So next is ability to pay. Now ability to pay refers on how the customer is the customer whether or not they are capable to pay back the finance. So they will look on their source of income and employment. If they see that their income is their source of income is strong, and then the the difference of their expense, the remaining of their income after minusing their expenses, if they if they have a strong cash flow, then they are they could make a strong candidate. Same goes for employment. If they are in the workforce for a very long time and they have good review from the company, they will be a very strong candidate. Next is the margins of financing. Now over here refers to how much money can the bank grant to the customer. So if the customer were to request for 10,000 ringgit, how many percent that bank can actually give? Bank cannot give 100% of financing. Uh, it is too hard, it is too risky. So they will look at the customer's um, overall, <clears throat> overall capital contribution by customers to part finance assets. So they will make sure whether or not that the customer has a sufficient amount of cash flow to meet with their payment. So if the if the money that wants to meet with the payment is low, then the margin is low. Next is the purpose. So purpose refers to what is the reason of this financing. What in which part of the you know, of the applicant's business or personal use a loan can actually contribute to their daily expenses. So over here, they need to provide a very strong evidence such as business activity, cash flows, and so on. So if they can provide a very strong evidence, then this will give a huge confidence to the bank to grant the financing. Next is the amount. Amount refers to the total amount of money that the customer needs. So over here, the customer needs to provide a strong evidence shows that shows to the bank that which part of its business that requires this loan. So they need to show how this loan could actually contribute to this business. By doing that, it, should, it gives the bank uh, a big confidence that they will utilize the money very well and they will actually generate some, generate some income and they could pay it back. The next is the repayment structure. So repayment structure stands for how will be how is the uh, payment plan is going to be so this is where both customers and bank need to um, agree on this so one of the things that they will consider is the I mean, total length of time of proposed financing how much how long is the tenure of the financing and next is the number of installments so what are the frequency that they need to pay weekly, yearly, or monthly basis. So lastly is the insurance. So insurance over here refers to the protection of the credit. So unforeseeable outcome could happen. We will never know. We will never know what, what are the customers will face. Whether they, if they will go to a recession, then there will be some hiccups to pay back the financing. So, they, so there needs to be an insurance to protect the credit. So this will benefit to both bank and to the customers. Now moving on, how do we apply those credit evaluation to a scenario? So let's have a look here. A scenario. Mechia Ahmad is a 60-year-old employee attached to Sunwig University. He holds the position as the head of content, which makes which he makes 8500 8, ringgit a month. So he has many expenses commitments such as house installment, food, his debt in his life, utility bills, EPF, and etc. Now uh, that will estimated cost about six thousand ringgit. Now he would like to take a loan from from the bank for twenty thousand ringgit for a car. How will he be evaluated in this credit? So first, C character. So the bank will take a look at the overall aspect of the customer. 
So he sees that he has a good profession, which is the head of content, which is a very good candidate. However, they have too many debt, and at the age, he is at the age of 60. So over here, he will be considered as high risk because too many debt equals to there's a lot of commitments that they that Encik Ahmad needs to focus on, need to prioritize. And then his age, he is 60. So in the mortality rate, he may not be, he might not make it to, uh, to pay the finance in time. So they would consider this applicant as a high risk. And then next is the ability to pay. So over here, Encik Ahmad has only one source of income, which is his wage as in head of content in Sanawi, Sanawi University. And then he also has many commitments. So he has a lot, he has a 6,000 ringgit worth of expenses that he needs to uh, prioritize every single month. So over here, they need to consider him as a high risk as well. Now, next is the margin. So margin, as I mentioned, is the percentage on the granted loan that will that Encik Ahmad will get. So over here, he only have 2,500 thousand ringgit left after minusing all the expenses. So that is the amount that he can pay for the expenses. So when the margin is, so when that kind of uh, money is very low, so the margin that will be granted to Encik Ahmad will be low as well. The next is the purpose. So the purpose for Encik Ahmad taking this loan is to own a vehicle to move there and there so he can get to work and places. The next is a amount of finance that he needs. So he needs a 20,000 ringgit for a car because the average car cost would cost around 20,000 ringgit. <clears throat> the next is R, stands for repayment structure. Now over here, he, uh, as I mentioned, repayment structures is on how is the payment plan. So for his case, he is a 60 year old man, which is high risk. So he would have a short installment payment because bank need to mitigate this kind of risk. So because he because they forecast that Mr. Ahmad is old and he may not be able to meet with the financing repayment if we if they were to give them a normal tenure. So he will shorten the installment payment. So this would lead to a higher monthly payment. So the reason is to mitigate mortality risk. And lastly is I. So I stands for insurance. So the bank needs insurance to ensure that if Ichi Ahmad, he cannot, if, if, he, if he is not able to pay, that the customer will be, so the bank will get the protection that they need. So this would include Ichi Ahmad's um, expenses, <coughs> uh, monthly expenses, which they will add on. So I would like to pass the screen back to Fatiha. All right, thank you, Alma. Now we move on to the credit risk assessment. Here, for the credit risk assessment, we use the five Cs. So like how the OCBC Al Amin evaluate their applicant? What are the requirements from the customer so that OCBC Al Amin can avoid risk of default? So firstly, character. Character is described as an individual unique mental and moral characteristic. Not only OCBC Al Amin aims to provide credit to those who have strong qualification and references, but they also look at how the person takes responsibility and treat their workers and customer. So considering OCBC Al Amin is unlikely to know their individual personally, they must assess um, his or her character based on a range of data and subjective factors. So they will look for the uh, delinquencies in the applicant credit history and analyze payment record. So OCBC Al Amin may also use a credit score with a numeric value. So this score is like calculated using the information from the applicant credit report and represent the OCBC uh, Al Amin perception, uh, perception of risk. So here the value, uh, the value is generally between 300 and 850 with a, a higher number indicating a lower risk. So while OCBC Al Amin may utilize this score, they have their own standard for deciding what level of risk is acceptable. So character is assessed not 
just by credit history but also by the applicant educational background and industrial experience so the quality of the applicant reference uh, and the experience of the worker may also be taken into account by the OCBC alumni. So here, this information is uh, very important in assessing the applicant capacity to pay the credit facility. Okay, secondly, the capacity. So our capacity is measured in a variety of ways. So OCBC alumni wants to review all part of the application, including their uh, financial debt um, and the... Uh, liquidity ratio and credit uh, credit history in order to determine current and anticipated cash flow so all of these are used to assess the applicant ability to pay the credit facility so the applicant business need to like show a sustainable positive cash flow meaning that their income exceeds their expenses and to ensure a healthy cash flow a business must have liquidity and liquidity is also defined as working capital. Capital is the total amount of asset held in the borrower's name. So it is a measurement that reflects the applicant commitment to the business and how much of the applicant owns money they uh, they have put into it. So like the owner who have put their own money into business usually get a credit facility from OCBC Alamin. And this make a statement about the owner face in a uh, fit in the company um, and then the OCBC alumni will examine the uh, applicant salary slip uh, or the vouchers for the previous three months, uh, commission statement for the previous six months and EPF statement for the previous year so that like this document will serve uh, as evidence of the applicant financial stability and the applicant and his or her employers monthly contribution will be shown in the statement and the, so like this is an excellent approach to demonstrate to OCBC Al Amin to which the applicant uh, the application is requesting for credit uh, the applicant income level and stability and the next one is the condition okay condition apply to the applicant company status and how they intend to utilize the fund Therefore, the applicant must be upfront and be honest about their plan. So, uh, the OCBC alumni may uh, examine uh, how the money will be used, uh, present economic condition and future prediction for the business they operate in uh, while assessing uh, an application. So, the data is very important because it helps the uh, it helps OCBC alumni to estimate the risk of investing in the company. And the second one is the uh, the OCBC alumni will also look into the applicant secrets and uh, CITOS. CITOS is like a credit reporting agency that provide credit reporting for individual and financial institution. For example, um, when the applicant are applying for home credit facility, they will need to show their secrets score or the CITOS. Um, to the OCBC alumni and when looking at their score the applicant should like ideally give them confidence that they are financially savvy and well managed so the OCBC alumni will help uh, with the final credit score that the OCBC alumni will assign to the applicant uh, this allow them to accept the applicant home credit facility because he or she stated that they pay monthly due and bill on time and lastly are uh, collateral so when applying for a secure product like a vehicle credit facility or a house credit facility borrower must pledge a certain asset under their name as collateral so collateral refers to the asset that are uh, pledged to back up the credit facility so this asset include uh, inventory equipment and real estate when a borrower fails on a credit facility collateral serve as a safety net so here the ocbc al amin will analyze the pro uh, the borrower payment history uh, this uh, this allow OCBC Al Amin to assess the application as a potential borrower. So the payment history of the applicant is a major factor in evaluating the total credit score. Aside from that, the OCBC Al Amin will also analyze the applicant credit usage. 
uh, the quantity of available credit use on the applicant credit card is referred to uh, as credit card usage. And OCBC Alamin will analyze an applicant credit card usage since like, it might provide information about their financial skill and money management habit. All right, thank you so much, Fatiha. And move on, let's move on to the next section, which is the financing and security documentation. You know, so security documentation is important to ensure and secure bank with security asset from customer. So this is also to enable bank to take possession and the right to sell the asset. So over here, the security, the security asset will act as a collateral to the bank. So let's say if a customer is unable to pay their finance in time or sufficiently, so the bank has the right to sell it for a compensation or to cover all of the losses that they just uh, face. Okay. So one of the examples in OCBC Al Amin for security documentation is financing, financing documentation process, which is for business banking I. So you're going to focus on the property, how the security asset comes in. So first, the customer needs to provide a location of its subject property along with the statutory declaration. So this is where the customer needs to declare that the subject, the, the property will be given to the bank. So they need to give a location as well exactly where it is. The next is a confirmation from the developer that all service charges has been paid. So over here, the customer, before they are giving the asset to the bank as a collateral, they need to make sure that there is no outstanding payment or there are no service charges, outstanding service charges in the property. So this is to ensure that the bank will have the full ownership of the property. And lastly, it's a copy of current quit rent and assessment receipt. So this is a proof that the customer is no longer attached to his property by paying rent. So this shows to the bank that the full ownership will go to the bank as a collateral. So with that, I would like to pass to the next presenter, Lingesh. Thank you, Omar. So now I'd like to talk about the background of Chandra Sadi Brahad. So Chandra Sadi Sadi Brahad was established in November 2008 and as the only subsidiary of the Chandra Chattar Brahad, which is a conventional type of bank. And Chandra Chattar Malaysia Brahad to enhance the banking operation, especially in the Islamic banking. And not on, nonetheless, we have stuck Standard Chartered Brahad established in Kuala Lumpur as a global hub for Islamic retail banking in 2012. Therefore, with the Standard Chartered uh, Sadiq playing a key role in supporting international Islamic banking corridors. In addition to that, they are also offering uh, financial products to provide uh, individuals and also corporates as they help corporates expand in our food print markets internationally and also they develop a relationship with the clients in the bank public sector and also regional wealth funds in recent, recent years. Thank you so much Lingesh. So next I will explain about the vision and mission of Standard Chartered Sadiq. So for vision it is to play in stimulating economic and social development through the services that we provide and by being a force for good. Meanwhile, for mission, it is to create exceptional value for our clients, our investors and our staff through market leadership in order to provide an innovative Sharia compliant products and solution and also by adopting and living our core values. So from here, we can see that this standard chartered SADIC is uh, following their vision and mission because as you can see nowadays this Islamic bank providing a lot of Islamic com uh, Sharia compliance products so it will benefit all the people around the globe so next I'll pass the number so the first product which uh, I've highlighted is leasing eye so leasing eye 
of uh, S.C. Sadiq is based on the Sharia concept of Ijara wa Iktena, where a property between two parties in which one party, which is the bank, uh, would give the right of the property to the other party, which is the customer, uh, for a certain period uh, with an agreed amount of uh, price. And um, at the end of the contract, the asset will be given to the customer as a gift. Uh, this is how Ijara Vaitina concept works. Um, customers of uh, SC Sadiq uh, will have the option to go for either fixed or floating rate uh, financing, where the uh, profit rates will be adjusted on a cyclical basis. And the asset can be pre-owned or bought directly from the supplier beforehand, but with an easy installment plan. Uh, they offer this product as a form of long to medium term uh, credit which helps in working capital financing. Um, the assets under this type of financing products may involve uh, vehicles, uh, real estate, machineries, uh, equipment and also other assets that are accepted by the bank. Uh, the eligible customers of this uh, product include sole proprietors, SMEs that could be private or public limited companies and also government authorities. So the second one which I've highlighted before is CMFI revolving. Uh, this product is based on the concept of Moraba and I'm pretty sure that everyone is now familiar with the concept of Moraba. Well, Moraba is the cost plus financing where the bank would purchase an asset on the request of the customer and the bank will sell it to the customer with an added profit and until the asset is sold uh, the bank will be required to take the risk which is associated with the purchase of the asset until the sale of the asset and the asset will be compensated with the uh, profit they get I mean the bank will be compensated with the profit they get from the sale of the uh, product for their time value spent and uh, the bank will not be able to charge any extra money on late payments or any deferred payments as the asset will still be uh, as a rahno or as a collateral for the bank and uh, the repayment uh, of the asset under this uh, product or this contract it can be done in installment basis and uh, SA Sadiq offers uh, tenors between one to one month and six months uh, once after the contract has been signed and the eligible customers can be SMEs, commercial enterprises and corporate entities. Okay, so uh, looking into uh, Sadiq Myham Warren, I, uh, this product is a Sharia investment account that can be shared by two customers uh, which enables them to have a secured home financing plan. Um, it gives the customer greater profit share and returns based on the Islamic concept of Musharaka Mutanagisa. Uh, Musharaka Mutanagisa or Diminishing Musharaka is a partnership agreement which is made between the bank and the customer uh, because they are associating with the property. And while the customer is repay, uh, repaying the installments, the share of the bank will slowly start to decrease until the property fully becomes the owner's own. Uh, the customer's own property and SC Sadiq offers attractive returns on this facility and the customers will be able to obtain uh, possible Mudaraba dividends every time they deposit supplementary cash into their Sadiq My Home One I account. Uh, the next one is Tawarok Just One account. Uh, Tawarok Just One account is a fixed rate uh, deposit account which is based on the concept of Tawarok and uh, the concept uh, in this concept, the account helps the customer with a return uh, which is fixed and the customers will receive profits or monthly bonuses of up to 0.6% uh, additional profit per annum. And the account holders of this service uh, accounts are protected by Perbadanan Insurance Deposit Malaysia uh, with up to 250,000 ringgits for each of the depositors. Okay, uh, last but not the least, the BIS property equity financing product, uh, which is a commercial property 
and premises financing which is calculated on a variable basis against the fluctuations of base financing rate or the base rate. Uh, the customer will be pledging uh, their business property as a collateral for the financing and uh, based on the concept of Musharaka and Ijara, this product offers a tenor up to 20 years for SMEs and 65 years for individuals. And as the previous uh, products, uh, the SMEs, corporate entities and also government authorities are eligible uh, for this type of financing. Next, I will pass to Lingesh for the next part of the presentation. Thank you, Naba. So now I would like to talk about credit evaluation. So what is credit evaluation is about? Credit evaluation is a process of pro which is which is which a business or individual become eligible for financing or vehicle for, uh, where they can purchase a good or services over an extended period of time. Uh, and also a process by which a business or a, a credit a creditor evaluate a credit request borne by the individual or the business owner. And in this case, how the bank will evaluate the customer's financing application? First, they will look into the credit of the customers credit history of the customers and they will look into the income and also the employment history of the customers as well and also they will look into the debt in debt to income ratio which they have to like the bank will see whether they are eligible or not for this type of financing and and also they will see the value of the collateral that they have the customers have and also the size of down payment how, how much they can make for their financing and also we have they have a liquid asset like how much the liquidity asset they have and also lastly they have a the bank will evaluate about the financing period or the tenure period like how long they can borrow and then how much they can pay for each month in order to provide the financing for the clients So, in accordance with the case scenario 1, Puan Salma is a senior lecturer at University Malaya. She has been working there for almost 12 years and she makes 500,000 a month and contributes 11% in the retirement fund. And in addition to that, she pays a vehicle financing monthly which amounts to, which amounts to about 1,000 ringgit. And it is estimated that she will spend 600,000 on a house in Tiara Damansara High. Here, where you have, you want to, you would like to apply for a financing at China Chartered Civic Bank in order to, uh, in order to buy a house. And in this case scenario, where the bank will want, the bank will look into the credit history of one Salma and also the employment history, and also they will look into they, they will look into the income or employment history and also the debt ratio debt to income ratio and also the value of collateral they have but in the, this case where Point Salma able to get the financing from the bank is that because she already have a credit history she already working at University of Malaya for almost 12 years so she also making a good uh, good hover view about herself in the banker view so that they will have to the bank will have to give a financing for Puan Salma in this case where the Puan Salma is a less riskier person where the bank have to provide the financing when we look into the collateral type Puan Salma has no uh, they only have a vehicle and also they have an other than that they don't have any collateral for collateral for the financing but she can able to get a financing because she already um, prepared a 10 percent of down payment for a house financing and also she able to pay because she already earned good money and also she able to get the financing from the bank itself So according to case scenario 
two. So case scenario two is basically about a business uh, owners. So in this case, they have a two business owner, which is Inche Shanmugam and also uh, Miss Kalaiwani. So Inche Shanmugam is uh, basically a uh, DK uh, doing a tow services for the clients area Uluklang and also uh, Miss Kalaiwani doing a beauty beauty services for the client customers as well at area Uluklang as well. So both of them uh, earning per year is about ninety four thousand and also they paying for their income tax annually and they they don't have any type of commitments because they they just use utilize a business uh, their their profit to buy to buy anything that they want and also they just like if they they, they are they just buy they just don't want to have any commitments uh, in at, 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 at the moment but they plan to buy a house in Monkiara which is about 400k so in according to this case where the banker the, according to the standard chartered banker what they will do is they will look into the credit history and also the employment history and also they will look into the debt income ratio whether and also the value of collateral they have and then how much the size of down payment they have in order to get a financing from the standard chartered for in order to own a house so according to this case scenario where firstly the according the employment history and also the credit history when we com compare to employment history is good because they are both of them are in in that field about almost 12 years plus and but we look into the credit history they don't have any commitment so it might be a bank it might be a question for the bank in order to approve a financing and also the value of collateral they don't they just have a vehicle that that one is like not really can 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 be a guarantee type of collateral for the their future finance their own financing and in this case where the in this case where the banker will not approve the financing in terms of in terms of uh, in terms of this case where they because they have both of them have pressure they don't have any commitments if they, they if they do have any personal type personal financing means that might be a plus point for the banker in order to approve their financing that's all from me now i would like to pass the floor to shima to talk about credit assessment Thank you so much, Lingesh. So now I will explain about credit risk assessment. So what is credit risk assessment? So credit risk assessment is actually a process where the credit officer comment and highlight the strengths or the weaknesses of the financial proposal that submitted by the customer. So standard chartered study does a risk assessment before finance their customers in order to see the ability and the attitude of their customers. So it evaluates the customers who take credit facilities but only for the Sharia compliance project or activities. So what is the key elements that include in this credit risk assessment? So there are five key elements that the bank should complete or should settle in order to know their customer's attitude. So the first is the character. So for this uh, character, the bank will uh, research more on the customer willingness in order to fulfill their obligation. Like for example, the obligation or the willingness or the ability to repay the financing. So next is the capacity. So it refers to the customer's ability to pay the financing amounts. It depends on the uh, principal or all the financing amounts that included in this financing. So the third is capital. So this capital is refers to the customer's financial resources, which it comes from their salary, from their wages. And next is the conditions. So in this 
stage. Uh, this refers to the external influences that can affect the customer's ability to honor their obligation. So the last is collateral. So it's normally the tangible assets that are used as a security and support for the bank itself in order to mitigate their credit risk. So for example, the customer can put their assets like gold in order to be their security of the bank so that if the customer default on their payment, the bank has their rights to get that uh, assets or the gold in order to repay their financing amount. Okay, I'll move to the next slide, which is the credit score assessment. So in this slide, it's more to like how the standard chartered SADIC assess the credit score of their customers. So as you can see in the slide, there is a credit score table, which is known as secrets. So if the customer in the no score or poor or low level of their credit score, this bank will not approve any financing proposal that submitted from their customers. But if their customers are in the level of fair, good, very good or excellent, this bank, I can say that they will approve the financing proposal because there is a low risk by the customers. Okay, next is the CTOS score. So how is the CTOS score calculated? So as you can see in the slide, there is uh, five um, key elements on how CTOS score is calculated. So there is 45% um, which is the payment history. So it actually refers to the, the whether the customers pay their loans on time or they have missed any payments in their past. Next is the amount owed which is 20%. It refers to the number of credit facilities and the amount that owed to the banks from their customers. Next is the credit history length, which is 7% will calculate it in this CITO score. So it actually refers to how long the customers help any credit facility, like they applying for the credit card or financing. Okay, next is the credit mix equivalent to 14%. So it refers to the type of financing and credit cards that the customers hold, which is the which like home uh, and credit card or personal financing or loans. So the last one is the new credit, which is equivalent to 14%, which will be calculated. Uh, it refers to uh, how the customers have been approved for their new credit facilities recently. So all these uh, factors will calculate by the bank in order to know the CITO score of the customers. So uh, after all these uh, secrets and CITO score calculated, the bank or the standard chartered SADIC will mitigate their credit risk from their customers. Alright, move to the next slide. I will explain the causes of getting low credit score. So, this slide will explain how the customer getting their very low credit score. So, the first is bad paymaster, which means the customer always fail to pay their financing on time and very late payment. Next is the default on financing. Here it means that the customer default on their financing which they cannot repay for their financing amount anymore. So next is the maxing out your credit limit. So here it means um, like you have a very very high credit limit. So it will affect your credit score which it will drop in value. So next is the sharing poor financial relationship and there is no or limited credit history and you have been rejected from any credit application. So all these causes will affect you to get 
low credit score and it will affect in your future which you cannot apply for your for your uh, any financing uh, products so i think that's all from me i will pass to naba uh, i will continue with the financing and security documentation of sc saudi barat um, as you all may know, financing and security documentations are an important element when choosing to get finance from a bank. Um, it is evident from the 200, uh, 282nd verse of Surah Al-Baqarah that uh, people must keep written documents or witnesses as a proof of dealings when doing business with others because it can be uh, presented as a proof of justice if any issues occur in the future. Um, every bank would require a document of security at the customer pleasures for the purpose of financing and uh, this is because uh, during any events of default uh, it will be easier for the bank to recover the debt uh, using those legal documentation. Um, it is important that the flat security in term, uh, is good in terms of marketability, liquidity and also uh, it, it is, ex it is uh, accepted by uh, everyone. Uh, this means that the security uh, must have a broad market for the bank to sell the asset easily and the security must be legally accepted uh, or the security must be a Sharia compliant asset that does not land the bank in trouble for trying to sell it in the future. Standard Chartered Saladik Barhad uh, requires uh, customers to pledge different types of assets as financing and security documentation. Uh, as for Saudi my home one uh, Islamic, the customer would pledge a property as part of its security. And if the customer is um, unable to pay on time or during any events of default, uh, the bank would uh, foreclose on the mortgage and the customer has to suffer any consequences that may arise uh, after uh, selling of the property. And the customer must also pay uh, any remaining money after selling the mortgage uh, to cover for the loss. And um, the bank also has the right to set off any credit amounts in the Saudi My Home One Islamic account to pay for any outstanding amounts of the financing. Uh, now I will give you some additional information uh, regarding my country's security documentation. And as you all know, Maldives is a tiny country with not even uh, one third of the population of Kuala Lumpur. Um, my country consists of Islam uh, of uh, Islamic banks, which is two Islamic banks, which is Maldives Islamic Bank and also Bank of Maldives Islamic. Uh, but here I will be um, taking Bank of Maldives Islamic's financing and security documentation to give you an insight on how this works uh, here in the Maldives. Um, so, first of all, let me give you a brief uh, summary of the Maldives Islamic Bank. Well, Maldives, uh, Bank of Maldives Islamic uh, first established their BML Islamic branch in 2015 uh, with a wide range of uh, deposit and financing products to their customers. And since then, uh, their finances have been increasing and uh, that is because people uh, started to get aware on the Islamic products or Islamic finance when banking. And uh, the security depends uh, on the facility they provide. And they provide two types of financing facility, which is secured personal and business facilities and also unsecured personal and business facilities. And for secured personal and business facilities, um, BML Islamic requires customers uh, to provide 150% of security from a property, uh, from a property or a vessel or a four-wheeler, it depends. And uh, their first priority is always the property and customers may pledge uh, residential properties, commercial properties, industrial properties, uh, as well as agric agricultural land, which a lot of Maldivians rely on uh, for their, like, for income. And, um, if the property itself does not cover as 150%, then the bank would require the customer to pledge a vessel or, equi or equivalent to cover up for the 150%. Because sometimes uh, the value of the land and other islands other than the capital city Mali are quite low, so it, uh, so it kind of requires people to 
pledge vessels such as huge fish boats uh, as a security because these uh, fish boats have a higher value than the land which they have in the islands. And uh, then for the unsecured personal financing facility, the bank does not require any securities, but for unsecured business facilities, uh, they hypothecate the goods, stocks, and business assets. So that's all from our group, and I hope the information we provided has benefited you all in understanding about the two banks that we have selected. Uh, I